Hey folks, welcome back. We're looking at page two of the AP Chem lecture outline on gases. And a lot of this is background information. Okay, so let's just be aware of that as we go into it. Now, I want to collect some facts about water and temperature. Mostly these are temperature facts, but we can use water to understand them. And we're going to develop some temperature scales here. On the Celsius scale, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, it freezes at 0 degrees Celsius, and our absolute zero is negative 273 degrees Celsius. That allows us to establish the Kelvin scale, where absolute zero is zero Kelvin. We don't use a degree sign. I'm not actually sure why there. 200 is where water boils. Okay? Now, the Celsius degree and the Kelvin degree are the same size as each other. Okay? Now, the F word. I don't even really want to say it on camera here. Okay? Fahrenheit. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? It freezes at 32 degrees sorry, <laughs> Fahrenheit, okay? And our absolute zero is a whopping negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, using the Fahrenheit degree size, we have a ranking scale, which is an absolute scale. Zero degrees ranking, okay? Water would freeze at 492 ranking, and it would boil at 672. Now, you're never going to encounter this, trust me. You'll never see this probably on uh, an AP exam itself either. I discovered the ranking scale through an interesting question that was on a thermodynamics exam that, uh, physics professor wrote, and I thought it was a really cool thing to actually have to do the calculations to figure out where they were. It was kind of a cool question, okay, but it was nothing more than just an interesting exercise. All right, now, barometers. Go watch the barometer video. No, I'm not joking. Pause this one. Go watch the barometer video. Okay, now, you're back from the barometer video. We have a tub down here of liquid mercury because of its very high density, about 13.6 grams per milliliter for that mercury. We inverted that very long test tube, almost a meter. What did she say? It was like 850 centimeters, I think. Okay. It was full of mercury. The mercury dropped <clears throat> a little bit, came down something about that level. Okay. So the distance from here to here, okay, was typically at sea level about 760 millimeters. Now, that video, I don't think, was done at the beach, although it was from a school in North Carolina, okay? So don't know, you know, exactly where, okay? But there's a lot of beaches in North Carolina. Be aware of that, okay? Air that's pushing down out here onto the tub of the mercury causes the mercury to push up in the tube. But when there's less air out here on the outside, the mercury level can drop. Up here, that is basically a vacuum. Now what we can do is we can actually insert gases in here and that level goes up and down. We can do that to measure the pressure of the gases. That's something we're gonna do a lot of in uh, like chapter 11. Okay, so how much air pressure is out there? Well, if we have one square inch, 
I have not done that with the ruler, but it's pretty close, I'm going to say, maybe a little too small, okay? But if this were one square inch, it would be about 14.7 pounds on, not pounds, pounds, P-O-U-N-D-S, per every inch squared, or we tend to call that PSI, 14.7 pounds per square inch, is typical atmospheric pressure, okay, when we're at the beach, okay, sea level. Go up onto the top of Mount Everest and it's going to be a lot less, okay? The PSI unit is important for you to understand, not for your chemistry class, but for when you're putting air in the tires of your bicycle or your car. That's typically the unit that they use, okay? Another abbreviation, not uh, the most important thing on the planet, conceptually, but just an abbreviation that's important, STP, standard, temperature, and pressure. STP is zero degrees Celsius, or we like to say 273 Kelvin, and 1.00 atmosphere, okay? Now, it's pretty standard not to be working at zero degrees Celsius. How did we ever end up with that becoming standard temperature? Standard pressure makes sense. That's atmospheric pressure down at the beach, you know, coastal areas. This goes way back to long before we had air conditioning and climate control and all that. And the only way to actually control temperature was either to have an ice bath or a boiling water bath. And you did not want to work in a boiling water bath. So what you basically did was you built one of those huge coolers. We're talking the big ones like you'd see the Costco, like you can fit a body inside of. Okay, but you never saw that, 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 no, uh-uh, keep walking, don't look. Uh, so you would fill, fill it up, ice on the bottom, throw some water on top, let it sit for an hour or two, come to temperature, and then you could put your balloons in there, which were typically made out of, uh, like intestines and bladders from animals. Uh, and that's how you did your experiments with the gases, okay, inside of there. Okay, now. Some pressure units. Like I said, this is a page mostly for reference, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, 1.00 atmosphere is 760 torr, which is 760 millimeters of mercury, and that comes from up here at the barometer up 760 millimeters typically, lower pressure, it doesn't go as high, higher pressure, it goes a little bit higher, okay? Which equals 101.325 kilopascals. And again, that's not something that the AP Chem exam uses, but it's very common if you're in AP Physics, so be aware of that, okay? Although I don't think we have AP Physics this year. This is also equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch. Now, a very standardized unit, which is used but doesn't come up all that often in chemistry, is one bar. And one bar is equal to 100 kilopascals. So we've rounded down a little bit. So one bar is just beneath one atmosphere, okay? Almost the same, but not quite. With rounding errors, it does come out to be just about the same thing, okay? All right, so uh, I really meant it. You should have watched that video about the barometers. And as we're going through the rest of these lectures, I'm going to be giving you a lot of little short two and three minute videos to go and watch. Go and watch them when I say it. I'm trying to pick ones that are done by people that I know or ones that I've watched and I'm sure that the people have not made terrible mistakes in. Okay? 
All right, that's the end of page two, and you'll be tuning right back in for page three in just a moment.